So now let's talk about the different types of vaccines. So the first type we're going to talk about are what, what's called live attenuated vaccines. So a live vaccine is a pathogen that could replicate in your body. So it's alive. It can, as, as alive as you could say viruses are, uh, most of these are viral uh, vaccines. Um, and in the, when we say that they're live, we mean they get in your body and they infect your cells. But they're attenuated, which means they're not going to cause disease, uh, usually because they've been weakened somehow, um, many times by propagating them in cells in the lab, such that the cell, these um, pathogens uh, have been weakened, uh, their genes have mutated, um, and they no longer cause disease. They do cause infection, but they don't cause disease. So a live attenuated vaccine um, is really good because when it infects your cells, it produces more viral particles in your body. But these viral particles do not cause disease. The infection does not cause um, disease of the virus. So. The advantage of live attenuated vaccines is they're going to infect cells, they're going to get in the cytoplasm, they'll be taken up uh, via phagocytosis, and pathogens that can be uh, can infect cells and end up in the cytoplasm or be taken into vesicles can be presented on MHC class 1 molecules and MHC class 2 molecules, and that will allow them to activate both CD8 T cells and CD4 T cells along with being taken in by B cells using their B cell receptor or taken in via macrophages, via phagocytosis. So a live attenuated vaccine uh, seems to produce the most robust protection because it mimics a natural infection without all the side effects of disease. Um, this list here includes the vaccines that are typically live attenuated vaccines. So if you have gotten the MMR vaccine, and most individuals get this when they're young, that means that you've actually been infected by the measles virus, a very weak version, but you've been infected by the measles virus. Didn't cause measles, didn't really cause disease. Maybe it made you feel a little achy, but uh, infected your cells, replicated in your body, didn't cause disease, but provoked a strong immunological response, which gives you immunological memory. So measles, mumps, rubella, yellow fever. One version of the polio vaccine, which we'll talk about in a later video, is a live vaccine. That is the oral Sabin vaccine. Um, rotavirus, which is a fairly recent uh, vaccine, as well as chickenpox. So all of these vaccines are based on live attenuated viruses. You're injected with them, or in the case of the polio one, orally given it. The pathogen, these, and these are all viruses in this case, infect your cells, replicate inside your cells, get released from your cells, uh, and provoke a very strong uh, immune response, giving you really good immunological memory so that if you ever get exposed to the real pathogen, you won't get disease. And we'll see examples of live attenuated vaccines um, in the next few videos. Uh, another common type of vaccine is a killed or an inactivated vaccine. So this is typically used for pathogens where um, a live version is not safe. It's not safe to inject a live weakened version because it doesn't seem to be a good weakened version to give individuals. So you don't want to expose them to a live version and possibly give them disease. So in the killed or an inactivated vaccine, uh, the pathogen is either heated up or chemically treated so that it is... Um, not able to cause disease, it doesn't cause infection either though. So it doesn't replicate. So with the live attenuated vaccines, they replicate in the body. The killed or inactivated vaccines, those pathogens will not replicate in the body. So it requires a larger amount of uh, pathogen to be injected uh, during the vaccine delivery. Whereas the live attenuated version you can apply a smaller amount in the vaccine because it'll replicate in the body. These will not replicate. Um, so there's no natural infection that occurs using a live or an inactivated vaccine. 
So these pathogens are going to be typically taken into to either dendritic cells or macrophages or B cells, the professional antigen presenting cells taken in via phagocytosis or receptor mediated endocytosis, which means they'll be, be presented on MHE class two molecules, which means they'll produce primarily a CD4 T cell response. So you won't get a very strong CD8 T cell response via uh, immunization um, by killed or inactivated vaccines. But these work still pretty well. You're still going to develop um, uh, B cells and antibodies, neutralizing antibodies, hopefully, um, and lifelong protection. Uh, and so examples of killed or inactivated vaccines include another version of the polio vaccine, also known as the Salk vaccine. Um, most influenza vaccines are uh, killed or inactivated vaccines, uh, as well as the rabies vaccine. Rabies, a uh, very deadly virus, there's no live version yet, at least, that can be given to people uh, without causing disease. So the current vaccine is a weak or, or is a killed version of the virus, or an inactivated version. Um, the last type of vaccine we're going to talk about is a subunit vaccine. So if you recall, um, one of the goals of a good vaccine is to produce neutralizing antibodies, provoke an immune response, get some naive B cells to become activated B cells, differentiate into plasma cells and memory B cells, and those cells will secrete antibody, and the antibodies will hopefully bind uh, molecules on the surface of that pathogen, and when the molecules bind the surface of the pathogen, that would prevent the pathogen from attaching to any new cells, preventing infection. So IgA and IgG are antibody isotypes that will provide neutralizing, uh, neutralization uh, effects. So one way to generate neutralizing antibodies would be to provoke an immune response that would uh, produce antibodies that would bind molecules found on the surface of a pathogen. So these are surface antigens, and we would love to have antibodies that bound surface antigens. If we did, then the pathogen would not be able to uh, maybe attach to our cells. The pathogen would be bound up with antibody. It would be neutralized. It might be opsonized as well. So how to uh, generate neutralizing antibodies? Uh, one way is to inject individuals with just the antigen that is found on the surface of a pathogen. So two good examples of subunit vaccines are the hepatitis B vaccine and the hepatitis A vaccine. So in these vaccines, individuals are actually not injected with a whole pathogen, but they're injected with a piece of the pathogen, specifically the hepatitis antigen. This is a molecule, it's a protein found on the surface of the hepatitis viruses. And this pa uh, protein is actually uh, made in uh, a recombinant way. So what does this mean? It means cloning the DNA gene of hepatitis virus that codes for these uh, surface antigen proteins and putting that DNA into um, another organism so that that organism will churn out the protein and that can be purified and put into the vaccine. So in this case, uh, the recombinant protein, the recombinant hepatitis antigen protein, it's actually made in yeast cells. So yeast have been genetically engineered to have the DNA uh, of this gene and the gene will make the protein. The protein becomes purified out of yeast cells and injected into humans. So this recombinant surface antigen from the hepatitis virus will hopefully be uh, recognized by some naive B cell with its B cell receptor. It'll be taken in by B cells, be taken in by dendritic cells and macrophages, either by uh, phagocytosis or um, pinocytosis. And this will hopefully provoke a CD4 T cell immune response. We've got antigen presentation, via MHC class two molecules. And if this is the case and B cells have recognized this protein, then B cells will activate, they will differentiate, they will isotype switch, um, and we will have, uh, and they will affinity maturate, 
and we will have plasma cells and memory cells that secrete an antibody that uh, has a antigen binding site for the uh, hepatitis antigen, which again is found on the surface of, cell, of the pathogen. So we have generated a neutralizing antibody here. Um, so if we're ever exposed to the real uh, hepatitis virus during a natural infection, we all, we've got uh, a low level of antibodies being produced constantly by our um, long-lived plasma cells. And so hopefully being exposed to this virus, uh, we won't even be infected because we're producing these neutralizing antibodies. And even if we are infected, these memory B cells will also bind this pathogen and they will activate and churn out lots of high affinity antibody, repeat the process of somatic hypermutation and affinity maturation to improve the antibody response, and we will not be uh, coming down with symptoms of hepatitis. So the, those are the three types of vaccine we covered in this video. The live attenuated uh, vaccine, which is the best, really provokes the best immune response. Um, the killed or inactivated vaccine, and the subunit vaccine.